What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Major League Success Tell Me More podcast presented by the Real Estate Cheat Code. And I'm excited because I got Megan Bogdan with me from Berkshire Hathaway Platinum Realty Group. Uh, Megan, thanks so much for taking time out of your day uh, to jump on here and, and to talk to us about your journey. Yeah, thank you for having me. Truly a, a privilege. And I know we were kind of talking a little bit, um, you know, before we got started and I'm super excited because, um, you know, I don't really know you uh, and, and know your journey. So I'm going to be learning as we go through this, just like the listeners are. And uh, Megan here, what we do is we always start from the beginning um, okay. because what I found after interviewing, you know, agents over the last two and a half years is there's usually something that happens either earlier in life or in a different career before real estate that has had a huge impact. So I, I always think it's super important to start from the very beginning. And um, so what was life like for you growing up? Oh, very beginning. Okay. I thought, <laughs> very, was, yep, yep. okay, very beginning. Um, well, I need to start off by saying I'm a middle child. Um, so I think I attribute a lot of my success to that just because I'm, I'm relentless and I just have that middle child personality. Um, uh, my parents, like I grew up in Grove city for a small part of my life. My parents got divorced. My dad moved to the hilltop. My mom moved to new Albany, very polar opposite upbringing. If you're not familiar with those areas, that's the top of the top and the bottom of the bottom. Um, so, um, yeah, went to graduated high school at new Albany um, worked actually from freshman year until my senior year, I worked at Donato's. Um, and then I applied to Capital University. I really wanted to play soccer, um, to, uh, I'm, I'm, I still play soccer to this day. Absolutely love the game. Um, but hindsight, I wish I would not have gone there to play soccer just because they completely broke my bank. Um, my college was on me. So after three semesters of, um, of attending Capital University. I was completely broke. I remember going to apply for a loan for Wells Fargo for the next semester. And they like, they said no. And I was like, okay, I'll try somewhere else. And I think I went through three or four different um, avenues for lending. And I'm like, man, no one's giving me money. Like, what am I going to do? Like I, I made, I think at the time I made like eight seventy five an hour working at Donato's as a manager. Like I was not making money. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the start of it. There's more to it, but I'll I'll let you interject there. Yeah, I mean, no. I, so so did you play soccer then in college? Um, yeah. I mean, I I was on the team and I played a little bit. Um, like yeah. So I played, but I didn't play. If that makes sense. Um, so did you end up did you end up graduating or switching and going yeah, to a different so to a different school? I actually so that semester I had a come to Jesus moment and I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I. Um, I make the joke about how I, um, I had the choice to either become a stripper or, uh, join the army. And I did the more degrading of the two and I joined the army. Um, so I joined the army, um, the Ohio army national guard as a generator mechanic. Um, and then went through training. Um, and then in 2012 ended up going back to Ohio state, um, ended up receiving my degree from there. Um, compliments of the Ohio army national guard. Thanks, Uncle Sam. Um, and thanks everyone for their tax dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But um, so um, yeah, I ended up graduating from Ohio State. Um, I actually got married very young, um, which is something I wanted to touch on because um, I think sometimes like my career, my professional career and my personal life are incredibly intertwined. Um, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people's are, but sometimes they try to segment, um, which is probably harder than not. Um, yeah. so I actually got married very young. I, I was 21 when I got married. Um, and I was married while I was going, going to Ohio state. My ex and I started a marketing business. Uh, we marketed for physical medicine centers, made a very good living doing that. So I was like, Oh, who cares about a degree? I'm going to get a degree in sexuality studies. Um, which was incredibly fun. I loved it. It was great. Um, however, I, um, so I, I like, got the degree in sexuality studies, but I had one semester left. So I was like, Oh, I really love real estate. My ex and I were going to, um, use a real estate license in order to like invest essentially. So sure. I was like, oh, I'll sure. go ahead and I'll, I'll get my license and we'll go from there. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I did end up getting a degree. Yes. Not anything significant, but 
No, I mean, I, you know, this is why I always love starting from the beginning because, you know, looking back and I, and I found as I uh, talked to agents that a lot of times we don't take time to actually re- reflect on that journey. Yeah. You know, there usually there's pivotal moments, pivotal decisions that are being made that obviously we don't know back then, you know, the impact it will have, you know, in the future, but, right. you know, taking that time to reflect um, on those things. What, um, so for the business that you had in the marketing side of things, so what, were, what exactly were you marketing? It was, it was physical medicine center services or services for physical medicine centers. So, um, I basically would connect with local businesses, um, and offer them like lunch and learns, free massages, um, offer to come to their health fairs and obviously give out free stuff. Um, just make connections. Um, it was, that sounds much more glamorous than it was a hundred percent. Like a hundred percent of my time was spent on the phone, on the computer, like just trying to get in the door to places like that. Um, like we did, I mean, we've done things, we did things with like Cardinal health and like really big companies around Columbus. Um, but we basically just got in the door and said, Hey, if you're experiencing any pain, which anyone in the workplace, um, when you're sitting for eight to 10 hours a day, you're experiencing right. some kind of pain. So, um, we gave them free consultations and they were able to come in and get treated at the clinics. So, Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so you, it, it taught you phone skills, right? Oh Conversation skills. I am so grateful for that, like experience mainly because for a couple of things, yes, what, what you just said about phone skills. Um, but also it really, it made me, um, almost like impervious to the word. No. Like, yeah. like when people would reject me, I, I mean, it really hurt in the beginning and I took it personally and I would get defeated. However, um, then I was like, okay, well, why is there a no? Like, why are you, do you not understand what we're providing? Do you not, um, are, are your values not aligning? Like, what is the reason you're giving a no? And a lot of times when I would figure out the root of that no, I would actually be able to convert it to a yes. Um, mm. So it, get, it built those skills up tremendously which i mean i definitely use that in my day-to-day um work as a as an agent yeah let me ask you this megan because you know i think um there's there's really three ways to grow your business right it's um you know you can put more time and effort into it you can um increase your resources that could be money that could be people that could be systems that could be processes or whatever right and the third way is that you can increase your skill set mm. um what was it for you that was it trainings that you went to was it conferences that really made you want to deep dive into the no because that's as humans right we no one none of us love to be rejected or be told no or whatever but in our line of work and sounds like similar to that. And obviously today and what you do, there are way more no's than the yeses that we're ever going to have. You right. know, we don't get that many wins in our right. business. Now, the wins that we get, we're lucky that they are larger, right? You know, with pay and all of those things. But like, what was it for you? Was it, was it resources? Was it trainings? Was it conferences that really made you want to do a deep dive into, okay, if I can understand, if I get a, all of these no's, and I can truly understand why they're telling me no. Is it a surface level no? Or is it just like a, a deeper motivational reason why they're telling me no? So I guess there's, um, so the reason why I started with marketing, like why I why I shifted that mindset was basically, I mean, I can't really take credit for it. I think it was just one of those things where I was extremely money motivated and I'm like, I'm not making money. So I need to figure out how to do that. Um, and then I'm just a very relational person. Um, I like to, I like, I like to, well, I'm relational, but on a, a little tangent, I also love to figure out how people tick. Um, mm-hmm. So I've read a lot of books as far as um, like, uh, I'm going into like human, human psyche, sociology, psychology, I've read a lot of books that I'm like, oh, these are like, um, have you heard of the book, How We Decide? No. Um, it's basically a book based on like, like how people make snap decisions. Um, it's a, it, it's a great book, very easy read. Um, but that, I remember reading that book and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm taking these things personal when I have to remember, I mean, as humans, we feel like like we're on our, we're our own bubble. Like we think that the world's right. about us and like, Oh, people hate me. That's why they're saying no, but they, 
I mean, as far as real estate, they're not selling their house because they have kids in school. They have jobs here in town that are close. It's a short commute. Like there's so many other reasons why they're saying no than just because of who you are. Um, right. But then as far as real estate goes, when I started, um, when I started full time, cause I was part time for three years. And then since 20, the end of 2019, I've been full time. Um, so since I started real estate, um, I really struggled in the beginning. And then my broker actually paid for, I think like, like eight of us to go to an, um, a course called Ninja Selling, um, yeah. which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, and that, that alone, I mean, I didn't pay for it, but I say it was worth every penny. Um, yeah. because that alone, it, oh my gosh, th like the shift in perspective. Um, I think thinking of the no and thinking that there is a no, and then remembering that there's more to it than not accepting the no, but thinking, of, okay, well, they're not there yet let's be a resource. Let's, let's be somebody that they can count on yeah. if they have questions about anything, if they want to know if, and if they have a roof leak and need a roofer, if they um, want to know the value of their house to, to refinance, like, like right. basically be somebody that they can just call at any moment because then you'll get the yes later. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's always so interesting. Um, you know, when you're talking about backgrounds before they got into, you know, before someone gets into the business. And I just know that was a huge, um, a huge value add that you went through that uh, before becoming a real estate agent. So 2012, you decide to get your license because you had what one, one credit left that you had to fulfill. And uh, you decided yeah. to go get into real estate. Um, you know, I always ask, uh, and, and it sounds like you kind of graduated around the same time as me. And I always say like our group of, of, uh, individuals around that time frame, it was probably to me the last of the go get a degree if you want a great job type yeah. environment, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> uh, and you know, when I got out in 2011, uh, you know, the job market was not that great and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I got in three weeks after graduating. Uh, from Ohio State, I got into real estate and, and mm -hmm. just been doing it ever since. So for you, I'm curious, did you have supporters? Did you have doubters, you know, coming out of college, right? You got a degree, you know, that was supposed to be the thing that got us the the the, the job and, and the security. Um, I know you mentioned that you did it part-time or started part-time, but um, can you kind of walk me through some of that initial process between you know, supporters or doubters? And then what did that first year or so look like for you to go out and start building your business? And so, okay. So I didn't actually, so I didn't even graduate. Like I'm, I'm, oh, I graduated high school in 09, but like my college took way, way longer than it should have. Sure. I graduated in, in 2016 and got my license in May of 16. Um, so the first three years of having my license, um, it's interesting because I think this is like, I think this is a very common mental journey for everybody um, because I was expecting people to beat down my door like, oh my God, Megan, you have your license now. We can buy a house with you. Awesome. Um, but then I had a lot of people say, oh yeah, we'll buy a house with you or we'll like help us do this. But then they would never call me back or they would never, mm -hmm. or I see that they buy a house on Facebook. And again, I'm super butthurt about that because I was like, you told me you were to use me. Like, why did you right. go and use somebody else? But like what I didn't understand that I, that I understand now, I tell every agent that's getting their license. I'm like, really, truly, if you're going to be an agent, you need to be full time, like jump into it feet first. Like it's going to be scary. It's going to be hard, but just do it because, um, I mean, there's, I, I can't remember like a, a specific verbiage for this, but basically if your energy is like split rather than doing a hundred percent of anything, you're going to be doing 50% of both or, or 30% if you're, if you're splitting three ways. Um, so I was doing the marketing full time, but I was absolutely not doing real estate full time. I was, I was sending out like calendars and I would send things in the mail and I would occasionally post on Facebook. Um, but like, basically like my, those three years were really difficult, but I think it was because of me, like it wasn't because business wasn't there. It was because I didn't know how to get it. Um, first yeah. of all, I didn't know how to market myself. Um, and I think I just didn't know the industry at all, really. 
Um, so as far as supporters, my, my broker has been really excellent at like, in my brokerage, like ever, like all the agents, like they all are very cooperative. They want everyone to do well. And it's been really an incredible environment, um, for my career to be fostered in. However, um, people like my family, like again, my ex-husband at the time, um, did not like, like real estate was a hassle. And that was the only reason I had my license was to make, to get investments. So like if any, if anything pulled me away from the marketing business, he was not a fan of that. And then right. I actually, I told this story not too long ago, my family, um, and then my, my sister ended up buying a house using another agent. And like, like they, like they didn't, like, I did not have that support from my family. I had it from my brokerage, but then I'm not going to go out and seek it from them. You know, right. like I would prefer to have it from my family. But I actually told this story the other day. Um, my grandmother was always like super candid about the fact that she was like towards the end of her life. Like she's like, oh, honey, I'm dying soon. I'm like, I'm 18. Like, I can't handle hearing you say that. But the, I mean, fast forward a few years. But um, I remember having a conversation with her like, oh, well, well, grandma, with you, we were talking about her estate. So I didn't just bring this up out of nowhere. Right. But, um, we were talking about her estate. And I was like, well, maybe it would be awesome if you would have me if I could sell your house. And she deadpan looked at me and he goes, oh, honey, no, like we need somebody that knows people. You don't know anybody. And obviously she was, I mean, she was 90 years old. She was yeah. in the, in the mindset of non-internet <laughs> age where you did have to network a ton and you had to right. have those relationships with people. Um, so that, I mean, that's the kind of support I got from my family, which wasn't much at all. So, um, well, you know, sometimes I was just talking to an agent about this today. Like, you know, sometimes the biggest hurdle that agents have, especially getting into the business, because again, our, our industry is not one where you join right out of high school or you join right out of college, right? Typically it's your second, third, fourth, fifth career choice. And that's just the nature of, of our industry. Right. And a lot of people struggle with showing their sphere of influence, showing their family members that they see Megan in this light as what, as what you were or what you were doing or, or used to be doing versus Megan in this light as a real estate agent that, that knows her stuff. Right. And, and that I, I help a lot of agents get into the business. And that's what I see as the biggest challenge is you have to get yourself into a position with the people already that already know you and like you, you have to get them to trust you that you are the expert when it comes to real estate yeah. and you have to change their view of you. Yeah. Um, and, and I always say like a lot of times like family and friends are not the best clients to work with because they don't see you as the expert. They no. see you as the friend. They see you as the sister or the brother or the cousin or the nephew or whoever. And, I think and, and they, and they abuse it. Right. Yeah. They, they abuse the relationship because that line isn't there. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, so, I mean, it, it's funny that you say that cause you are on point with everything that I've said about like, cause even when, um, like in 2019, again, when I decided I'm going to jump in this full time, well, I was kind of pushed into it, but we'll get in that, get in that, get to that in a minute. Um, but I had that exact, like, I was like, oh, people are thinking of me as marketing Megan. Um, I was a CrossFit coach. They're thinking of me as CrossFit coach Megan. They're thinking of me as generator mechanic, army Megan. They're not thinking of me as an agent. So I was like, screw it. This year, every single person I know will know will know me. At 2019, it was my goal. Everyone will know, A, I'm an agent, and B, that I know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm, I'm not just somebody who does this as a hobby. This isn't just like a like side gig. No, this is 100% what I do and I'm passionate about it. And I really care about my clients and what I'm doing. So like that was, I had, but what's interesting is before I made that switch to, for everyone else, I had to make that switch for myself. Like I mm -hmm. had to see myself, like I'm an agent. Like I'm not just like, yeah, I have these other avenues that I use to make money, but this is my career. This is like, which I feel like that, is also a difficult thing for new agents to, um, yeah. to kind of, cause obviously depending where they are in their life, they're like, they're transitioning in some way, shape or form. When you become a new agent, you're transitioning yeah. from, I mean, maybe being a student, maybe, um, you're transitioning from, I don't know, another career or something, but, um, but yeah, the, it's important to have that mindset switch in your own brain to know like, oh, okay, this is, this is what we're doing now. 
and acknowledge what, that. What helped you get there? Because I know that's scary. Uh, because obviously you're going from something that you're comfortable with that you that you know yeah. to something that you're uncomfortable with that you really don't know all that well. Yeah. So, How did you get there? How did you uh, get to that point of making that 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 switch? That's a very loaded question just because of, <laughs> um, so there, that this is where my personal life is so intimately intertwined with my decision to, to do real estate and to become, a, uh, I mean, a full-time agent. So 2019 was like the absolute year from hell. Um, I, um, my younger brother passed away from a drug overdose. Um, I ended up getting a divorce. My ex, like we went through this whole, like, it was probably about eight months of like, honestly just like abandonment like he just didn't didn't talk to me wasn't there he would leave me and like just be gone for days I wouldn't know where he was at block my phone number like all this like crazy stuff um and like I I had to I moved five times in six months like I wow. like there was like so much stuff going on that I first had to have like a very like I had to completely rework myself um like my mindset my goals my like what do I want in life now that my my life has been completely rocked. Um, cause up until then I was still doing marketing. Um, and now I'm in a position where I have to pick another career. I was like, well, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this. Like I was thinking my, my uncle owns an architecture firm and, um, I was like, well, maybe I'll be an architect. I really love buildings and whatever. And then I, it was funny cause it was almost like in the same breath. I was like, you love buildings. You love architecture. You have your real estate license. <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> but, um, but like all of this stuff happened that basically like it like reduced me to like, like emotionally and mentally, it, it reduced me to the point of like a clean slate. And like, yeah. I was able to like rebuild. I almost felt like I just had to completely like rebuild my life. And I just took it as like, from here on out, this is what we're doing. So like, I don't know. It's a, that's a hard question to a answer just because of the fact yeah. that I, I can't like, I can't identify an, an, an because there were so many events that happened. Um, and yeah. that was a, a few of the big ones. Like there were just thing, thing after thing after thing. And like, but I, I think it was just the whole in like me just being like, okay, well, this is a period in my life. I need to sink or swim. Um, so learn to mm -hmm. swim. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that, uh, I would say there's a video, there's two videos that I always go to anytime I'm in a slump or anytime I'm struggling. One is, uh, Eric Thomas. Um, he has a video that mm -hmm. talks about, um, you know, until you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. If you guys yeah. just watch that video, that was very impactful because I was uh, earlier in my real estate career. Um, you know, I think with agents, you know, I bring that up and you mentioned it, right? I had to, I had to sink or swim, right? Yeah. And, you know, as agents, a lot of times you're not going to be 100% comfortable, confident and ready to make that jump. And I'm not even talking about the jump from another career into real estate. I'm also talking about the jump from doing what you're doing today to where you want to get to next. Right. right? Maybe right. it's, Hey, I've been doing 20 deals a year, but I really want to get to 50. Yeah. That is a whole nother level of commitment, sacrifice, right? Skill set, um, budget, you know, like all yeah. of those things. Um, and it's until you make that decision. Right. You, you, yeah. you draw the line in the sand and and you say, hey, we got to go. Right. Yeah. If this is what we want to do. So, um, Megan, for you in 2019. So you just kind of jumped in two feet at that point and yeah. went full time. Well, like so, like I said, um, I my brokerage has been an incredible like my broker and his wife and it's a family run business. They've been in business since the 70s. Um, they they truly like. I almost look to them for advice before I ask my own parents, just because they've become like part, truly yeah. part of my family. Um, they, I, I was like, Hey, well, I mean, I really want to learn. I, I'm going to go full-time real estate. Like I, I need to do this. Like, um, and we've just actually, um, the front desk person ended up moving. So we didn't, we had the front desk position open and I was like, Hey, this would be, I would really love to do this. A, I need a job. I have no way of making money right now. So it'd be really great if you could help me out in that way. Um, but also I actually didn't realize it at the time, but that was like such an, that was an integral part to my career because I was able to sit down. And I mean, I don't think a lot of agents, you, you, 
you learn as you go, but you don't learn as you go, if that makes sense. Like you, you know what forms need filled out, you know what things need signed, but do you know what they say? <laughs> do you know why? Right. Do you know like, right. do you know like the ins and outs of like what you're actually doing? And to be very honest, I'm not sure if I wouldn't have had that job, I don't think I would be as good of an agent as I am now, just because I know, I know what that contract says like verbatim. <laughs> like I know the, the se each section in the contract or the, or the purchase contract. Um, I know why they sent like they sign like the consumer guide and I'm able to just kind of like go through these things in a presentation just to say, Hey, like, this is what this is. This isn't a big deal. This is legal legally binding, but, um, cause I'll yeah. go through all of, um, what I would do is I'll go through all the files for, um, all the other agents that were closing deals, which also was a motivator. Cause <laughs> like every day I'd be like, man, there's, there's five files sitting on my desk and I don't have one. Um, but I would go through the paperwork and, and, um, and it, yeah, like I would just go. So for the, from, I want to say it was October. So from October until like June of 2020 is when I like that, that's when I was working on the front desk, but I was also doing my work like to try to build my business. And, um, now I've, I've talked so much that I forget the initial question you asked. <laughs> but, Being able to jump in full time okay, in 2019. Okay. So I, I think, um, so that, yeah, at the time, like I was, I was living with my dad. Um, I, that was the job that I had. I worked part-time. It was five hours a day. Um, so I think that helped immensely. And I actually highly recommend any agent that's like able to do that. I mean, if you still live with your parents and you're able to live on like a smaller income, like try to just be the front desk, like be an assistant to an agent yeah. just for six months. Like you'll learn more than you would ever think. Um, just based on that time alone. So I honestly think it should be uh, something that the division requires that every new agent has to join a team. Yeah. Um, you know, I know not all teams are created equal, Yeah. but you know, uh, for me, the team, it, it can help with the opportunities for sure, but it's what you just explained. It's the contracts, it's the questions, it's the addendums, it's the clauses, it's the paperwork. It's, you know, all of the other stuff that's going to keep you from getting into trouble, yeah. <laughs> right? It's, it's, you know, being able to pick up the phone and, and call someone or, or to shadow on a showing or to go on a listing appointment or do a buyer consultation or, you know, hold open houses, those types of things is where you're really going to learn how to be a realtor. Right. And I do think it's important to say too, like, for most of my life, I, 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 this is like embarrassing to say now, just because I want to kick my younger self. But like, I, so I worked at Donato's from 14 until 20 and those six years, uh, well, obviously the six years is nothing now, but like, we're gonna, that's, a, that's a big right. job. Um, but I didn't, I purposely did not go seek out a new job or find something else because I knew Donato so well. Um, I knew what I had to do. I like, I knew shortcuts. I knew everything. And I hated feeling stupid so much that I didn't go get a new job, even though I probably would have been paid significantly more in any other position, like in any other, like I could find, could, because of the experience that I had gained, I could have, I could have leveraged that. Like, right. I was so scared to feel dumb and I was so scared to not have the answer or, or have to ask for help or what, or in, any of those things um, that I think luckily when i started real estate i think i kind of it kind of pushed that to the side and i'm like you know what if i feel dumb i feel dumb i don't know anything yet like i need to be able yeah. to not only ask for help but point people in the direction that like hey i don't have this answer but i know my broker does he's been in this forever like yeah just give me a second and i and i actually think that i gained a lot of respect from other people for that just so because i wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to be the know-it-all and I very much admitted like, Hey, I don't have the answer to this, but I'll figure it out for you. Um, yeah. so I think that was really pivotal too, is just the fact that I was able to say, you know what? I don't, I don't know. And it's okay that I don't know. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because you're an athlete. I, I was an athlete. I think about this all the time and I think about why, um, all the time, like why don't we put ourselves out there enough? You know, growing up playing sports, we weren't afraid to fail in front of people. We weren't afraid to fail in front of our our parents, you know, our friends' parents, our teammates' parents, the other kids on the field, right, or on the court or whatever. But then as an adult in business, 
you second guess yourself because you're afraid of failing, right? Yeah. Like there's, and it's just human nature. And, you know, it's just like, why? Like, you know, like I was on, sh- I was on shitty teams growing up sometimes and I was on great teams growing up sometimes, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, like in the moment that I get embarrassed that I shot an air ball, you know, playing yeah. basketball, like, I mean, probably for about 20 seconds and then I had to, you know, get to the next play. Right. And you didn't have time to dwell on it. And I just think about that all the time. And I think it holds back so many um, agents, whether you're new or experienced to going out and trying something new or, you know, putting, you know, practicing, you know, that consultation on someone for the first time or, you know, adding in a new layer to your open houses or whatever the case may be to get people to sign in you know, to collect their information. I think about that all the time. And it's funny that you say that too, because real estate is an incredibly intimidating. I mean, you have uh, selling sunset and like, (laughs) and like, and I like, Oh my gosh, I had to, (laughs) I had to stop watching selling sunset because my boyfriend was like, Megan, cool it. Like I'd be like getting down on myself because I have listings that are two, three, 400,000 and they have like a $20 million one. And like, yeah. And like, but I feel like it's such an industry of comparison. Um, mm-hmm. because like, I mean, I drive a GMC, like I will, I'll, I'll go to, to meetings and I see people roll up in Tesla's and Mercedes and, and all these different cars that I'm like, but I'm like, a GMC is a good car. <laughs> like, like why, yeah. why am I, why am I down on myself? Cause you, there's so many opportunities to compare yourself. Um, And sometimes like uh, one thing I have to remember is that like uh, specifically with social media, because it is essentially like a second job, like you have to be on social media, you have to be interacting and you have to see, you have to follow other agents. You, you have to kind of see what's going on. You have to network and interact. Um, But like, you'll see stuff on social media, but you have to remember that they're showing their best. They're showing their absolute best. They're not showing you the 10 contracts they wrote for that client before they got that one accepted. They're not showing you the tears and the breakdowns with their, while they're sitting with their partner and they feel like they're not doing enough in their business. And like, there's just so many things that you don't see. However, you're comparing yourself to all the, the, the big stuff and the good stuff and the, the and yeah, I, I had a, a moment like a, a couple years ago where I was sitting in a room. Um, I bought a Grant Cardone um, mentorship program. Um, and I went to something called the business boot camp, which I actually highly recommend. Love it. Other events. I'm not so sure, but like this one was really <laughs> great, but I was sitting in this room. And at the time I was, I just turned 30. Um, and I'm sitting in this room and I'm like, man, like uh, what, when am I going to be there? When am I going to have millions of dollars and have employees and, and be able to like, to facilitate this growth and like have all these different things happening. And I had a moment where I'm like, you know, all these people are like 30 and 40 years older than me. <laughs> Like they've had time to, 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 to achieve this stuff. So, I mean, I know I'm getting on a tangent now, but, no. but basically we compare ourselves like, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people in the Columbus market know Sam Cooper. If I were to compare myself to Sam Cooper, who's been in the business for like a decade or probably more than that, I don't know how long he's been in, but like, that's, that's not fair. I've only been in, I've been in technically for seven right. years. I only really say four because that's full time. Like you can't, it's apples and oranges. Right. Right. For sure. It's, it's one of the hardest things. Um, it's one of the hardest things that you kind of have to block out. And, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, being told no all the time, right? Like you, you have to become numb to, yeah. to some of that, you know, yeah. you just gotta, I think you can, I think you can work on it. I think it, um, you can create that, um, numbness, so to speak, uh, around those things. Um, uh, Megan, I, I want to kind of touch on, how did you, uh, all right, you made the decision. I'm going in full time. You had one goal. Or, well, you had two goals in 2019, but one main goal, which was everyone's going to know that I'm a real estate agent, yeah. right? And that I can help them. How did you go about, and I know you mentioned ninja selling. How did you go about actually building your business 2019 and bring us all the way up to kind of current day? So like if there's been any pivots or changes since then of, of going out and attracting people to work with. Uh, so, to find people um, to work with you. Yeah. So, so you brought up um, how when you early in business, you um, you said something that I wanted to repeat, but now I can't remember it. But basically, um, um, so I had a lot of time. I did not have a lot of money. So I mm-hmm. spent every bit of time I possibly could. I would hang out on the MLS. 
um, and just learn it for, first of all, cause it's not a very user friendly website. Um, but I would sit there and learn it. But then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and look at the houses that are on the market. Cause I, Oh my gosh, I love, I could like, if I could just scroll the MLS all night instead of scrolling Instagram, <laughs> I would like, I'd be totally all about that. But, um, but I, what I started to do was I would find expired listings um, and find ones that I like really loved. I'm a massive mid-century modern fan. Anything that was built from like, like prior to 1960, I'm all about it. Love every era that there is. Um, it just has to be old. But um, so I'd find those houses and I'd write them letters and say, hey, I found the first letter I wrote. I, re I remember I said, um, like, it, it's funny how, um, like the first product you ever make, you're like embarrassed of. And cause like now I'm like so mortified to even repeat this, but I was like, hi, like I just found your expired listing on um, the MLS. Like why I, I see, I see you obviously want to sell your house. Why do you think this didn't sell? If you could call me and let me know, I would really love to try to help you or whatever. And now I'm like, Megan, <laughs> like, why would you say that? And then that letter evolved to, Hey, um, my name's Megan. I'm a, I'm a realtor in central Ohio, found your house on the expired listings. Absolutely love it. If you're still interested in selling, I would love to help you out. If you're interested in creatively using your equity, I would also love to help you with that. So just give me a call, connect with me and, and we'll see if it's a good fit. Um, which now I'm like, gosh, it's so much smarter. Cause that, that just like, <laughs> does it like, I don't know, like asking why somebody's house didn't sell like this. I don't know. <laughs> like, tell me. Um, yeah. But uh, so that's a lot of what I did. And then with Ninja Selling, one thing they encourage is to, to mail um, something valuable monthly. Um, mm -hmm. So that evolved from me trying to scramble and think about things and whatever. Now it's kind of dialed in a little bit. Like January, um, I send out, uh, like this past year, I sent out, I think it was um, like 475 valuations. So um, everyone on my neighborhood block got one. Everyone I know that owns a house got one. Um, a lot of people on that expireds list that I'm still nurturing, they got one. And basically it, I write them a cover letter and give them a CMA and um, include comps. And I include um, lender information, financial planner information, and just say, hey, like th knowing the value of your house, a lot of people is their biggest asset. Like you don't know, yeah. what it, you don't know what it's worth. You don't know the leverage that you could have. So if right. you, I mean, if, if you are done with this house, you want to buy a new one. I would love to help with that. If you want to maybe look into vacation properties, if you want to use your equity and pull it and invest somewhere else, I would love to help with that. Um, or at least yeah. an introduction to somebody that could help with that. Uh, February, they get, um, it's called from your friends. They send out a free coupon March. Everyone gets a lottery ticket. April, everyone gets sunflower seed or sun, sunflower. Everyone gets flower seeds. Uh, May, they get a free Cinco de Mayo coupon, um, and so on and so forth. I mean, I'll give my yeah. whole marketing plan for whoever wants it. But, um, but one thing I learned too was I started to try to build value with my business, but to help other people's businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to partner with businesses around Columbus and say, hey, like. I mean, can we go have these on this mailing? And if, if, if you give me like a free coupon, I'll pay for it. So local cantina for Cinco de Mayo, they just gave me 500. I actually think it was closer to 700 free coupons that I just sent out in the mail. I didn't pay for them at all, but I paid for the postage and the card and, and people got free yeah. tacos. Um, so I think with marketing anyway, um, that's been my main focus. What I'm really working on, I, I started... When I started, I was like, oh, I'll make a real estate Facebook page. And um, I didn't want to make a real estate Instagram because I already had my Instagram. And I posted far and few between. But now I'm trying again. Present day, I'm trying to hone in on that and be be someone that brings value and give you tips and, and be somebody to give you education. Um, but at, at the beginning, social media was not good. Um like I remember getting, like I, um, I mentioned, um, being able to write off some of the interest that you pay for your mortgage interest, write that off on taxes. And I got into an argument with somebody cause someone's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, you can. And they, they took it as you could write off all the interest. I'm like, no, it's a portion of the interest. Like, and like, it, and I was just like, man, but that does go to show that like, I heard somewhere recently that if you post something on Instagram and purposely make an error, 
like so many people will give you attention to <laughs> to, to correct it. No one's gonna help yeah. you. Up. Everyone's gonna want to correct you. So, <laughs> but I hope that you guys caught that right for the month of January. She sent out 475 home evaluations. You know, I was at a I was at a conference. Um, I was at a conference in June and, you know, one of the takeaways there was, and guys don't overcomplicate this, right? Like if you, if that's what you do every January, you do it every January. It doesn't have to be something new every single year, right? It's like, it's the same things over and over and over. Consistency is more powerful than something. Yes. Yes. You know, in, in June or July, right. One of the mailers can be, um, and this is what I took away from the conference is, January is here's what happened last year for your house, right? And it could be the year of of 2022. June, July comes rolling around. That that mailer could be or that uh, home evaluation is here's what's happened so far this year, right? You know, here's what's happened between January and June or January and July or whenever you send it out. Um, but 475. I hope you guys caught that because you know that could be what you focused on for the month of December, right? To send out in January. You know, that's ten a day. Right. A little over 10 a day, um, you know, in order to get those out in January. Um, and, and it's not um, it's not complicated. It's just whether or not you want to do it. You know, February um, could be, you know, around um, making sure everyone gets their the people that close through you that they get their settlement statement. Right. So that way they can, you know, use it for their taxes and all of those things. Like we know when these things are happening. Yeah. Uh, March and or April and like September, October ish, I partner up with a HVAC company mm. in the springtime. We offer a discount on AC servicing. And in the fall, we offer a discount on fall, uh, furnace servicing, right? Springtime. Because we know those two things need to happen. Mm -hmm. And we know that our clients should be doing that if they want to avoid costly, um, repairs to those two systems, which those are two of the bigger systems. Mm -hmm. um, I partner with a roofing company. Anytime there's a big storm that goes through, I have a message to all of our people in our uh, past database that says, hey, we partner up with a so and so roofing and willing to do a free inspection. We just had a big storm come through. They're willing to come out to your house, walk your roof, check your siding, make sure that nothing's, you know, was damaged. Free, free to you on us, right? Like, so, so you don't have to, you know, overcomplicate some of these things. It just has to be the consistent side of things. Yeah. And I think too, um, again, like I did the, ch so I paid for, I would buy from Michael's, I would get bulk note cards with envelopes and, um, and obviously with postage, like that was the cheapest way I could market. And then with sending out things monthly, I mean, your sphere, if you don't work your sphere, that's something that like I put so much money. I don't do any other advertising or marketing. Um, well, I'm, I plan to do it in the future here actually soon, but like that's where most of my dollars, that's where I can stretch them the furthest is because people that I know what like they're again, when you're consistent, when you show them that, you know, what you're talking about then they can sing your praises to other people, even if they don't use you. So, and that's the strongest, oh my gosh, the absolute strongest type of referral. I, I mean, don't, don't go through Zillow or Redfin or Realtor. Don't get leads from there. Get them from your people because those are going to be the value, most valuable. Yeah. Megan, I want to kind of move forward into your business and where you kind of want to get to um, yeah. some of your goals and stuff. What's something that you're looking to accomplish in the next 12 months? The next 12 months, um, my, so I have, I, I normally do goals in two sections, personal and professional, personal. Um, one thing I actually do want to mention that I don't think we talk about enough in real estate is the roller coaster. Um, and not of business, but of finances. Uh, cause obviously that you have the ebbs and flows of business, but then, um, so early in my career, like I said, I got divorced. My ex and I had a certain lifestyle that we would uphold. Um, and then that lifestyle for me very abruptly stopped. <laughs> so, um, but I still tried to maintain it. Um, and it wasn't like, I mean, we weren't like rolling in it, but I didn't, I never really had to tell myself, no, if I wanted to go right. shopping, I could, if I wanted to go get coffee every day, I could, like if I wanted to go out to eat, I could. So, but then doing that, I kind of put myself into debt doing it. And then also I was like, well, I need to invest in my business. So I put myself in debt that way. Um, so I racked up credit card debt 
But then in 2021, or sorry, 2022, like I had an incredible year. I did very, very well, paid off all my debt using my cash. Then I was cash poor. <laughs> and then I racked up the debt again because I was cash poor. Um, so this, the, this year is actually like, I've been really focusing on managing that financial stability, like making sure that I'm stable, paying off the debt, making sure I have um, multiple streams of income. So places it's coming in other places. Um, uh, so that's a personal goal, professional goal. I am, it's almost back to 2019. I'm trying to tell as many people as possible that I'm a realtor. Um, I want to be able to reach significantly more people. I haven't, I need to write down the number, a number for myself, but, um, like I want to reach a certain amount of people in like the greater Columbus area, um, and connect with them. Um, it's actually, well, so my goals typically are from like January to December. So when you say 12 right. months, my brain thinking like, Oh, well, where do I want to be this time next yeah. year yeah. in December? Um, but my goal is always actually every single year, my goal is to double my business, um, which is, it's ambitious. Um, but I've this, I'm, I'm staying optimistic, but being realistic, I'm not sure if it'll happen this year. Um, it happens from 2020 to 2021, 2022, 2023. I'm not sure we'll get there. However, it's always going to be my goal to double, yeah. um, to, to hit it, hit two, two times the amount of people that I did the year before. So love it. What, what's uh what's a five-year goal for you? What do you five want to year do five goals. years? Um, again, personally, I want to add a couple more investment properties. I want to secure that side of my life. Um, five, year, five years from now, I'd really like to develop a team. Um, one of my overarching goals in life is to just pour back into people um, because I feel as though like I'd, I'd lived a very good life from, from zero until now. Like I'm not complaining in any way, shape or form, but I feel as though like I mean, I did go to New Albany, but I didn't feel like I was from New Albany. So I didn't feel like I had the same opportunities that everyone who went there had. Um, so I felt like at a, at a disadvantage. And I feel like I, it took me a very long time to, to realize that if I want something, I can go get it. And I want to instill that into other people. Like, if you want something, we can get it. It's going to take work. It's going to take time. But by God, we'll do it. Um, so I want to develop a team of people for real estate and kind of step back from that and and move more into like coaching and teaching. Um, and I guess, um, kind of mentoring people. That's awesome. Yeah. What's a, uh, what's a legacy goal for you? What's, what's something that you want to hit when you're no longer here? When I'm no longer here. Um, I, so my family life is like, I have a very weird family dynamic. Like they, we don't like uplift each other and love on each other. And like, it's, it's stressful for me to hang out with my family. Like what I want is to like, I want my, my family, my future children. Like I want them to know that family is going to be like the best thing for them. Um, but in doing that, like I want, I really want to create like a, so my, I guess I should say this first. So my goal in about 15 years is to own a network of bed and breakfasts. Um, like one in Montana, one in Missouri, Florida, um, Kentucky, and Tennessee. And I want to use that to, because obviously people, people who work hard also like to relax hard, sometimes play hard, but also like to relax hard. So yeah. I want to be like a, a network of, so where people can go, they know that other people are going to go so they can network and meet people that are going to help them with their business. Um, but then also relax and do whatever they need to do. Um, so having said that, I want to be, I want when people associate my name and when people say my name, I want them to associate it with like a resource and with um, like information and uh, self-development. So in that, in that respect, like I want to be somebody that people go to and they ask me like, Hey, who can I do for this? And I can point them in the direction of someone that can do a way better job than I can do or, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Does that answer that uh, question? I guess legacy wise, like I, I want to build something that my, that'll show my kids. Like there's, there's a lot more to life a lot of times than just like nine to five paycheck and do whatever you want to do. So. Yeah, no, I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Megan, last question for you. Um, and again, I really do appreciate you jumping on here with us today and um, you know, sharing your journey and just talking about real estate and um, you know, the highs and the lows, right. Um, that we all experience. Cause I always tell people, look, it doesn't matter. Um, 
you know, it doesn't matter where you're at in the, in the industry. It doesn't matter if you sold one home or if you sell 500 homes, mm-hmm. you know, we all go through the same shit, right? Yeah. Just, it's just a little different, you know, it might be a little bit larger over here and smaller over here or, or but it's all the same, right? It's yeah. all the same stuff. It's all yeah. the anxieties, the stress, the business, the finances, it's all the same. Um, so I really do appreciate you jumping on and, and sharing your journey with us. Um, but last question for you, if you could give our audience, uh, one piece of advice that maybe that you wish you had in the beginning, or maybe that you got, or if someone asked you, Megan, give me one thing that I need to be focusing on, you know, in order to go out and have success in this business. What, what would that be? Well, it's funny is I just, um, the other day I just made an Instagram post about this, like three things I wish I knew when I started real estate. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share those. Um, one, be resourceful. Um, well, can I, can I do three? Is three okay? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> All right. So I obviously love to talk. So this was not by no means a chore. Um, so, uh, number one is be resourceful, like trying to figure out, um, who you have in your corner, what you have in, in your, um, your arsenal, what, what you have that's, um, good about you. That's like, whether what, what you can use, what's good about you, like figure everything out about yourself and then figure out who you have that can help you use it. Um, I think a lot of times we just want to throw money at things with in real estate. Like we want to buy Zillow leads or we want to yeah. um, just pay for, um, oh gosh, I paid for those reminder, reminder media magazines that I'm sure no one looks at. Like it was cool when it was cool, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but, um, but that's not a good use of your money. Use your time wisely and be resourceful. Um, the second thing would be, um, can't remember the second thing. The third thing is, um, just keep blinders on. Um, don't, don't look at what anyone else is doing. Worry about yourself. Um, make sure just to like, just do what you're doing and stay in your lane and and align with your values rather than looking, like I said earlier at somebody else's Mercedes. I love Mercedes. Um, so at somebody else's Mercedes or the big house that they're living in or them going to vacation to Cabo three times a year, like, like just stay in your lane and do what you do because that's going to be the most fruitful path that you're going to take. Um, and actually I can't remember the second thing I was going to say, but I do want to say a third thing, like don't rush it. Like as much as like, as much as you think you need to be somewhere by a certain time or do something by a certain time or achieve a goal, remember that you have time. Time is on your side. A hundred percent. Like when, if you're putting the energy in, it's going to, the, the, uh, what's the, the principle of reciprocity, like put it out there. It'll come back. Just, just be patient with it and don't rush it. Yeah. I love it. Hey, thanks so much uh, yeah. for jumping on. And those that are watching, if you guys are in the in the Columbus area and you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing, you know, Megan's number is down below. Her Instagram handle is down below. Uh, if you're an agent in the area and you just want to, you know, maybe you resonate with her story, you just want to pick her brain and get to know her. And go, you know, maybe you go buy her uh, lunch or a drink or whatever because or she just brought you. Some- <laughs> she just brought you so much, you know, value, um, you know, through this call, like reach out to her. She's here to help. Uh, but Megan, for those that are listening in, you know, what are the be- what's the best way for someone to reach out to you to connect? Um, uh, truly, I'm unbelievably reachable. Um, the phone, email, if you Google me, my information's there. Um, I'm, I may not get back to you immediately, but it'll be within one business day. Um, and I would, I absolutely want to piggyback on what John just said. Like I, please reach out. If you're an agent, if you're in the market in any way, shape or form, if I can help you, I'm more than happy to do so. Um, I I wish that somebody would have said that to me when I was like in my early, um, early real estate career, but, but yeah, use me as a resource, ask me questions. Um, would love to help in any way. Megan, thanks so much for your time today. Um, I really appreciate it. I loved, uh, getting to know you and learning your journey. Um, so thanks again. If I can do anything for you, please uh, reach out to me. I'm here to help you and uh, serve you any way I can do. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks so much.